Welcome to Blender. In this video I'm going to explain marking seams, unwrapping, arranging UVs, and some basic texturing. We call all this process uh, UV mapping. So what is it and why do we need it? Well, uh, it's how we get the textures to lay on our model properly. So as always we start with our default cube and Blender gives the default cube a default UV map. So if you select your cube and go up to the UV editing tab, it puts you in edit mode, selects everything, and shows you the UV map that it comes with. And this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to make this 3D object turn into this 2D map. So how does Blender get this? So if we go back to layout and jump into edit mode, um, what Blender does is it takes these faces and it cuts them where we tell it to. So if I hit V here and I bring this down and go over here and hit V and grab this one and hit V, it unfolds this thing. Whoops. It unfolds this thing just like you see in the picture. More or less. <laughs> it's a little wonky, but you get the idea. And if we go back to the UV editor and we hit A, you can see that it's more or less the same shape. And that's how it does it. To cut this thing apart, we have to go back to the layout tab and we'll back this all up. And we're going to add seams to actually get Blender to cut it. So if we hold shift and select these edges, um, they're going to turn red when we mark the seam. So we're going to hold shift and select these ones. And we need one more here. So we have these edges, these edges, and that edge. And we right click and mark seams and they all turn red. So what Blender is going to do, it's going to take and it's going to take this edge and it's going to do the same thing. Fold it out so we have red edge here all the way around. But no red edge here so it stays together. Same with this side, it's going to grab this edge and do the same thing. And it's going to grab this edge and do that. And just like before, so now you see wherever there's not a red seam, it doesn't cut it. Where there is a red seam, you do cut it. I like to look at this as kind of like a stuffed animal. Wherever you would have a stitch on a stuffed animal, it's going to be cut. On the model. So now that we have our seams marked and they're all red, I'm going to go ahead down here to our little green triangle, which is our object data properties, and the UV map area here. I'm going to drop that down. I'm going to delete it. So I just deleted Blender's default map. So if we go back to UV editing and hit A, the cube selected, but we have no UV map. So to unwrap this, the hotkey is U. So you hit U and unwrap and you get the previous map again. So that's one way we can unwrap an object. Uh, there's another way, it's a quick and dirty way and it works sometimes depending on what you're using it for, but you can also select the whole cube, hit U and do a smart UV project. And you want to give it some island margin, just 0 .010 is probably more than enough and click OK. So what it does, that point zero one zero is it puts a little space in between each island and if you come up here you have vertex select, edge select, base select, and island select. So you can select this island and it's one island and you can move that island around and put it wherever you want. Uh, the important things to know is you don't want to have islands overlapping and you don't want to have islands outside of the grid here because it won't have a texture on it if you do that when we're baking. Uh, it'll bake black out on this edge and if you have an overlapping it'll bake one and then it'll bake the other on top of it so it'll mess up the texture of the one face but not the other. So that's basic marking seams and unwrapping. So now let's jump into the shading tab and put a material in here and I'll show you what's going on over here. Uh, so into the shading tab, 
And first thing you need to do is make sure this use nodes is checked so that we have our node set up and we can use node wrangler. If you didn't do node wrangler, go up to edit preferences, add-ons, and type in node and make sure you have the node wrangler turned on. So to use node wrangler, uh, there's a real important hotkey and the hotkey is with the green node selected control T and that'll bring you up a texture coordinate node selected with UV, a mapping node where you can change the scale and rotation and location of the texture and an image texture node connected to the base color of the principal BSDF. So what this does is we can select a texture in here. So I'm going to click new. Actually, I'm not going to click new. I'm going to click open and I'm going to go to my wood materials and I'm just going to grab material and throw it on there. So now to see this on your object, uh, you can go up to the material preview and select that and it will show you what it looks like. So we have that on there now. So now we're going to jump into the UV editing tab again. And you can see where these are placed. And we're going to turn material preview on up here so that we can see our texture on there. And if you select these, you really can't tell what you're selecting. In order to tell what you're selecting, uh, we have this UV sync selection. So if we select that, we can go back to face select mode and when we select a face it highlights that face so we can select different faces and see which one it's doing and then if we move this by hitting G you can place the texture exactly where you want to place it uh, mind you you don't want to have the overlappings but you can place it where you want to place it so I'm gonna go ahead and clear the seams off of this and mark some new ones so that it's unwrapped the default way so a u and unwrap so now we have this again so the textures are running this way along that whole face so they're perfectly aligned all the way around like that and then the textures on the side are going a different direction because of those and you can take this whoops wrong button you can take this UV and you can rotate it and you can scale it and change the aspects of it so when you're unwrapping you want to try to make a plan of how you want your textures to lay so do you want your textures to run all the way around that way so um, although I don't work there I guess so if you want your textures running around the edge this way, you can rotate your texture to make that happen. Or you can change it to run sideways. We're going to get into this in much more detail in the upcoming videos because we're going to unwrap the cup and the refrigerator and the sign and get textures placed on them and make them look good for Second Life. And we'll also go over some lighting because you have to use lighting and we'll bake the textures and it's going to be fun. That's it for this video. If you learned anything, uh, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one.